Euromax Highlights. And here's your host, Karin Helmstedt. Hi there, and a warm welcome to our highlights of the week, which have shaped up in fine style for the weekend. Three's a team. Estonian triplets are headed for the Summer Olympics. Life's a dream. Germany's Euro 2016 football squad is staying in style. And worth a visit, Lake Garda is a top tourist location in northern Italy. Well, it's true. Here in Europe, we are quite taken up with soccer as we focus on the Euro 2016. But that's not all for this summer. And many top athletes are keenly focused well beyond that to the really global event, namely the Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro in August. And this summer, one story will be making history there because for the first time ever, identical triplets will compete in one event for one country. Lila, Lina and Lily Lewick hail from Estonia and they come from the southeastern city city of Tartu and all three will compete in the marathon and so here's the lowdown on the trio to Rio. Triplets Lina, Lila and Lily Luik do almost everything together, both privately and professionally as athletes in a loner's discipline, the marathon. And now all three sisters have qualified for the Olympics. <laughs> It was our dream and uh, it is surprise. Uh, it's good surprise. We are three, three of us and maybe each other supports and uh, we give uh, so much energy for each other. Maybe it pushed also a little bit. Tartu is a university town in southeastern Estonia with a population of just under 100,000. This is where the trio live and train. The Luiks have become figureheads for their sports club. At age 30, they're late bloomers, first starting out as professional marathon runners in 2010. Now they try to run 150 kilometers a week. We started the professional sport so late, uh, only 24 years old when yeah. we were. And yeah. uh, it's... Uh, never too late. Eh? Yeah, it's uh, like uh, our motto, uh, it's never too late to to start uh, professional and something uh, what you dreamed of. Their dream has long since become reality. They were soon scoring victories at the national level as long distance runners. Here at a training camp in Kenya, they're working even harder. Under the slogan Trio to Rio, they're now setting their sights on the summer games in Brazil. Lina became the first to qualify at the 2015 IAAF World Championships in Beijing. Lily followed in Valencia. And then Lila in the Hamburg Marathon. From a small country like Estonia, three, three girls, sisters, are going to Olympic Games and they are doing the same event. It's, of course, it's a... Uh, uh, very exciting and uh, and it is interesting and uh, every, everybody would like to know about these girls. As identical triplets, Lila, Lina and Lily are used to attention. As children, they were always being photographed, even more so later when working as lifeguards or dancing their other great passion. With their success as runners came sponsors' recognition of the trio's advertising potential. The Luiks are also very active posting and blogging in social networks. As the first triplets in one Olympic discipline, the international press certainly has them on its radar. We live like normal people and we uh, we think like it's it's normal. We do uh, the same like thing every, as every like life. everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. like we love running and we do running and but uh, why so much attention? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, sometimes it's a little bit annoying and uh, but we have to deal with it. And, uh, but the the other way, it's good uh, when you have so much uh, uh, popular, popular fans and yeah, yeah fans who fans follow us. The sisters live separately but spend much of their time together. Lila, seen here in the middle, lives with her boyfriend in a traditional Estonian wooden house. Painting is one of many hobbies. Once their athletic careers are over, they want to keep working together, maybe as gallery owners or professional coaches. None of them could imagine ever going it alone. We know each other so much and it's easy to start something new, our company or something, because uh, 
Uh, we, yeah, we, we are like so much... So good uh, looking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also... We're like best friends. Yeah. None of the three have a real chance at an Olympic medal. Lila is the fastest with a best time of 2 hours, 37 minutes and 11 seconds. But that's on the slow side. The fact they'll be competing against one another in Rio de Janeiro doesn't bother them. We don't uh, feel sad if uh, yeah. somebody uh, would win a medal or something. That, uh, we just feel proud uh, on with each, other. each other and other mm -hmm. sister. And it's like if one uh, wins something, uh, it's like uh, we, all, we all, all three win something. The crunch time at the training camp in Italy begins in mid-June. Brazil is only the first step for the trio. They're already gearing up for the next Summer Olympics in Tokyo in 2020. And they're certainly off to a good start. Well, back to soccer. And earlier this week, the German team moved into its base camp in Evian-les-Bains, that's on Lake Geneva, a place where Yogi Löw and his team can relax between the games at the Euro 2016. Well, the four-star Hermitage Hotel is their home away from home, and we got a quick tour beforehand. A gigantic football cleat in the German and French national colours welcomes visitors to ebien le bains a picturesque spa town on Lake Geneva. This is where the members of the German national team will be based during Euro 2016. Coach Joachim Löw and his team will be staying at the hotel L'Hermitage. Built in 1909, it overlooks the lake. During the championship, the entire hotel is reserved for the squad. Hotel manager Yannick Le Eck is looking forward to hosting the Germans. It's a compliment. Something like this doesn't happen every day. To be honest, we're really proud. The four-star hotel has many advantages. This area is very, very safe with the lake on one side and the mountains on the other. And the hotel is surrounded by nature, which is great. You get the feeling you're in the woods, you can hear the birds, and we have a 15-hectare park. Our hotel also has a very friendly, family-oriented atmosphere, which is what they were looking for. The players' hotel suites look out onto either the lake or the forest. Yannick Leek is heading to the dining hall. The hotel's master chef will work together with the football squad's own cook. The mission is to respect the players are high performers, and so we need to cook the kind of meals they require. They're top athletes and need food that will allow them to win. It's that simple. The hotel has plenty of facilities to help players chill out between matches. A billiard table, a bar and even an indoor pool. And just one kilometer away lies the Camille Fournier football stadium, where the German players can train. The town of evian le bar has exciting events in store for Euro 2016. We've organized football-themed entertainment for kids and the general public on weekends during the European Championships. Up at the Camille Fournier stadium, you'll be able to watch the squad train every day. And we've established a press center nearby with space for 300 journalists. Windows are decked out with football decorations. And a local pizzeria even has a German language menu for the fans. Our bar will offer German beer. And we'll try to show all the European Championship matches and hope that it attracts customers. Euro 2016 is an opportunity for German and French people to get to know one another better. 
I'm pleased that the German team is here. It's good for the town. It will bring some enthusiasm to this reserved place. I'm not interested in all this. Football is mostly about business and making money. The town of Evian can be pleased to have such important guests. It'll liven up this town and change Evian a little. It's exciting to host an international team. Euro 2016 is a big deal for Evian Les Bains, and the residents are well prepared for it. Danish Icelandic artist Olafur Eliasson is known the world over for his architectural sculpture and for his large-scale installations that play with the elements like light, water or air. Well, what many people don't know about him is that food also plays a major role in his work and he considers the act of cooking and eating together with his team right here in Berlin as essential to their creative process, which is why he's now sharing some of his thoughts on the art of eating with a new cookbook. Olafur Eliasson's studio kitchen in Berlin has been buzzing since early morning. Everything has to be ready by noon. Each dish is vegetarian and made with organic products. On the menu today is tabouleh, a Middle Eastern salad made with bulgur, wheat, parsley, mint and spring onions. There are also sides of homemade bread and mung bean salad. It has sun-dried tomatoes in it, zucchini, feta cheese and a little lemon juice and dill. No one skips lunch here. The whole team gathers for a communal meal. Every day, lunch offers the chance to socialize and exchange ideas. And that is exactly what the Danish Icelandic artist Olafur Eliasson likes to see. His new cookbook was a real group effort. We thought we'd collect recipes for a year as a kind of sketchbook, to give the recipes to the people who work here as a little book. That's how it came about. My friend, the graphic artist Andreas Koch, put it together wonderfully. We collaborated closely. He did a great job in capturing the way we live and work together here in the studio. And that's what makes the kitchen more than an ordinary cookbook. Along with thoughts about food, it showcases Olafur Eliasson's studio and provides a glimpse of the work processes, projects and events in which food plays an important role. I'm interested in eating also from a scientific side. In the sense that a leaf or head of lettuce soaks up sunlight, it's like a solar panel or a battery. The sun charges this head of lettuce. I like these ideas. It all has consequences. The light, the energy, the food we eat. In 2008, Eliasson set up his studio in a former brewery and chocolate factory in Berlin. Around 100 people work for him here, among them architects, artists, designers and craftspeople. They implement his ideas. Eliasson is interested in natural phenomena like water and light. In 2003, he bathed London's Tate Modern Museum in a sunset and wowed more than two million visitors with his weather project. In 2011, he created a walk-through rainbow for the Kunsthaus in Aarhus, Denmark. And three years later, he turned rooms in the Louisiana Museum of Modern Art near Copenhagen into a seemingly natural riverbed. With the solar-powered lamp Little Sun, he hopes to bring light to corners of the world that have no access to electricity. It's about understanding energy and securing access to energy. It's a major issue for me, but I have other works about the perception of color or about psychology, gestalt psychology, like how does a specific color influence the state of my senses? That interests me too. The communal aspect of dining is central to Eliasson, who says food is a social glue. The studio has hosted celebrities from artist Ai Weiwei to actress Meryl Streep. And Danish star chef René Redzepi lent a hand in the kitchen. 
Lunch is free for Olafur Eliasson's staff. They help clear the tables in turns. Employees can take home any leftovers. My interest is in living well. With what ethical system do I go through everyday life? Cooking and eating is a big part of that because, of course, everyone has to do it. Olafur Eliasson garners inspiration from cooking. His book conveys that and invites readers to think again about work and food. Well, we'll be right back to food in just a second because now it's down to northern Italy for a virtual tour of Lake Garda. That's the country's biggest lake and its north shore is particularly special because it combines the lake with stunning mountains. And we'll be starting off in Limona sul Garda where the food seems to have all of the ingredients for particularly long life. Lake Garda in northern Italy covers some 370 square kilometers. Surrounded by alpine foothills, the northern shore boasts an enticing mix of rugged beauty and picturesque villages. One of the best known is Limone sul Garda. Until the late 1920s, this was a fishing village and could only be reached by boat. Franco Uzardi has lived in Limone for over 70 years. He witnessed the first tourist boom firsthand. Quando Mussolini Tourism began here in 1932, when Mussolini ordered the construction of the Gardasana Lakeside Road. In the 1950s, entire lemon groves were replaced by hotels. It was at that time that Limone sul Garda, with its narrow streets and romantic piazzas, became a favorite vacation destination for many Europeans, especially Germans. A small museum reminds visitors of those days. The progressive northern European women tourists were something of a revelation to local young people. They were much more progressive and open than we were. We boys would line up to go out with them, dance with them and get to know them. And in doing so, we contributed to the development of tourism here. When those women vacationers went home, they raved about us young Italian men. They called us Latin lovers. Limone sul Garda is said to be the northernmost point on earth where lemons grow. Tourists can still see a few of the remaining lemon groves. Aside from lemons, freshly caught fish is also a specialty of Limone sul Garda. Maybe the healthy diets lead to a long life? In 1979, a protein beneficial to longevity was discovered in the blood of a local resident. They found a genetic mutation that removes fat from the blood vessels, allowing the blood to circulate freely in the veins and arteries. That helps prevent Alzheimer's and heart attacks. Now there are some 30 to 40 people in Limone with this genetic mutation, likely the only ones on Earth. These days, it's not just Latin lovers who draw visitors to Lake Garda's northern shore. The mountains create special winds that make this a surfer's and sailor's paradise. On the other side of the lake, a cable car takes visitors up Monte Baldo. Each year, around half a million people visit this 30-kilometer-long mountain ridge. On a good day, you can see Venice from here. Or take advantage of the winds to go paragliding. The cable car goes from Lake Garda, one of the loveliest lakes in Europe, to the top of Monte Baldo, an altitude of around 1,800 meters, from zero to 1,800 meters, to what's called the Garden of Europe. At the foot of Monte Baldo lies the village of Malcesine. Known as the Pearl of Lake Garda, Malcesine captured the imagination of German writer Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. He immortalized the village and its medieval buildings in his book, The Italian Journey. The 14th century Castello Scaligero also stands for Malcesini's rich cultural heritage. 
Visitors can also see the monument to Goethe, who described the castle in his diaries. Goethe always sketched and painted, as there were no cameras in his day. The locals thought he was a spy and wanted to lock him up in the castle jail. But someone from Malchesene, who'd worked as a waiter in Frankfurt, said, no, he's a very famous writer. So they let him go, and then he lived by the harbor. When the sun starts to set over Malchesene, Lake Garda unfolds its true magic and reveals why it's drawn visitors from far and wide for centuries. Well, everybody loves to open a present now and again. And if you don't get enough gifts from other people, well, then, of course, you can always give one to yourself. That is at least the idea behind mail-order beauty boxes. Clients can subscribe to firms like Glossy Box or My Little Box and get a monthly surprise package delivered to their homes. Well, originally from the U.S., this model is all the rage in Europe, and the actual unboxing of the loot is half the fun. Subscription beauty boxes are like goodie bags for adults. Yvette Alamdar is eagerly unpacking a luxury box. For around 50 euros, she receives six to eight beauty products from various manufacturers. She has no idea what's in the box before she opens it, but curious customers can consult a website to see the selection of products currently available. It's like Christmas in the middle of the year. Depending on your subscription, you receive surprise parcels several times a year. That's what's cool about it, the anticipation, the excitement, and it's so nicely wrapped. It's the perfect occasional gift to yourself. Introduced in the US back in 2010, Birchbox was the original beauty subscription package. Now, many companies offer such subscriptions, including some in Germany. Customers generally receive a surprise package once a month. They can note their hair or skin type in their personal profile, so the products will be tailored to their needs. Boxes are available for men as well as women. The companies cannot offer inferior products or samples of standard products, things that aren't exclusive or very popular. You can only make that mistake once. Customers won't forgive you. Glossybox from Berlin has been sending out surprise packages of beauty products since 2011. It now boasts more than 250,000 subscribers in 10 countries. Each of Glossybox's boxes has a theme, suited to the season or special occasions like Valentine's Day. The firm pays particular attention to the box's design. The wrapping and unwrapping are all important. There are four steps to opening the box. You lift the lid, untie the bow, open or pull out the magazine, and you can see right away what the theme is. The excitement builds. Then you remove the little sticker and lift the paper. Everything's geared toward this momentary experience. Video bloggers are an important factor in the success of beauty boxes as a business model. Such unboxing videos are popular and some bloggers operate YouTube channels with as many as half a million subscribers. Companies send these women boxes for free, even if their assessments aren't always positive. This month I'm unfortunately not so happy. It's buttery soft like it's melting. This would have cost 10 euros. Crazy. Bloggers play a really important role in the marketing of these products. Many young women, in particular, learn about cosmetics almost exclusively through YouTube blogs. They watch the videos and subscribe to the channels where they watch every episode. So it makes perfect sense for these companies to send bloggers their products to unpack and show off. Yvette Alamdar also has her own vlog, for which she shoots around two videos a week. Yvette wants to make her viewers feel good, to give them a place where they can forget their everyday troubles. 
diese Kommunikation, ich beschäftige It's communication and technology, which I'm really interested in, bundled together with beauty. For me, it's all in one. And then I also get feedback from the people watching. It's just so intimate. Like with friends only online. And you can always get some advice. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're looking at Glossy Box again. To keep bloggers and customers happy, the subscription boxes need to offer something new each month. Because who doesn't like getting presents? And watching others unwrap theirs can be fun too. And that's all for this edition of our highlights. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, all the best from Berlin and tschüss.